there, 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 thou, tough, trough, through, thought, thorough, throughout. She nailed it. She drove it out of the park. She hit the jackpot. What in the world is going on? It doesn't matter if you've been speaking English since you were a baby and now you're in school, maybe in the US or UK, Ireland, Australia. You can't learn the rules because English doesn't follow the rules. Or maybe you're learning English as a second language, a school subject, even as an adult, in a place like France or Nigeria or Chile or China. The problem is all the stupid stuff that English does that you just have to learn and that you're only going to learn the hard way. There's so much that English does that doesn't make any sense. You can spell one sound in three, four, even 16 different ways. Like, all of these are ooh. Or the same letters can make one sound here and a different sound there. Like the double O. You can have ooh as in food, u uh as in foot, aw uh as in floor, a uh as in flood, o a uh as in cooperate, or o oh, as in brooch. Or there's a word like run that can have literally a hundred different meanings. For example, to run a race is way different than to run a company, which is way different than to run a fever. You're not crazy. English is crazy. We've also got crazy word combinations where individual words have nothing to do with the meaning when you put them together. Like in a nutshell, or on the up and up, or got taken to the cleaner. I call these party terms because they're terms that take on a special meaning when their words you know, dance together. I could go on and on. English is a super weird language. You are not an idiot. English will keep trying to fool you over and over. Listen, I'm 50 something years old. I've taught English professionally and there are still a ton of words I get wrong. Like the other day I was sending somebody an email and I used the word palette, which is about taste, instead of palette, which is about colors. and. You know, I looked like a doofus. There are a few things that are going on that make English so wacky. First, English started getting written down hundreds of years ago. People wrote things down the way they heard them, using letter combinations that made sense at the time. But then the way people spoke drifted while the writing stayed locked in stone. So the language is filled with all of these fossil spellings. And we feel like dumb rocks when they hit us in the head. There's whenever people were speaking in what's now England over a thousand years ago, you know, Anglo-Saxon mixed with stuff from Norse and whatever Old German used to be and some Latin and a huge helping of French. There's also a lot that came in from Spanish or Native American languages, plenty of words like coffee that came in from Arabic and words that have come in more recently from all over the world like safari from Swahili and sushi from Japanese. Unless you have family roots from Japan, I'm gonna guess that your great grandfather didn't know from sushi when he was a kid. All of this mixing makes English a fun language to know but a terrible language to learn. Third thing, English isn't English. It's a whole bunch of different Englishes. Back in the day, the English had a lot of ships that could sail pretty much anywhere and have a lot of guns. The English went out and they planted themselves in places like America and Canada and Australia without invitations. And over hundreds of years, the language has evolved differently in different places. Not just different accents, but often different words entirely. So for example, settlers from America seized most of the land from the people who were living there, forced them to learn English, but kept all the cool words like tomato. The English and the Americans also dragged millions of people from Africa who all spoke their own languages to live as slaves in their settlements in what they were calling the New World. So these people were forced to learn English, but certain elements from Africa, particularly the sounds that people say, have carried on through the generations. And it's the awful truth that generation after generation of black kids have been taught that they're stupid because they don't speak what's considered proper English. I hope that's not your experience, but if it is, remember that it's not on you. You speak a perfectly fine variety of English that just isn't the same as what's in your school books. If you want to avoid the bias, though, from teachers or employers or clients for a business down the road, you're still going to have to learn that book English so that you can operate with people who don't share your history and face it, they're not going to watch this video and see that your English reflects on your heritage, not your intelligence. The same goes if your speech is flavored with Spanish or some other immigrant influence, or if you have some regional accent. It might not be fair, but you know, that's the world we live in. And then there are all the places where the English invited themselves in as colonial overlords like India and Kenya. 
and the language maintains its dominance for things like governance and advanced education, you know, with a good mix of local flavor. If you're studying science in a lot of countries in Africa, you've got to pass your exams in English even though you probably didn't grow up speaking it at home, and you only really started learning how to speak it and read it in school. And if you're from a place like Korea, you might have an even tougher time with the language because there are very few contexts where you're exposed to it outside of class, and you have to learn it in a strange alphabet where the sounds don't match the letters. It's not your fault that the language keeps making you feel dumb. A lot of people feel dumb learning English, because it has so many dumb parts. Like, isn't it dumb that there's a silent B in dumb? If you want to learn a language that makes sense, try Swahili. In Swahili, there is an almost absolute match between the way the words sound and the way they're spelled, and every verb, except three, is absolutely regular. The vocabulary is completely different from European or Asian languages, and the grammar is way different, but there are no nasty hidden surprises, and the people often go out of their way. They bend their ears, they talk slowly, so they want to help you learn. That doesn't happen with English. English is going to throw nasty surprises at you in every third sentence, and if you don't understand what we're saying, we're just going to say the same thing louder. So we've established that you're not stupid, but English is going to try its best to make you think you are. How do you win? I propose a general strategy for you to do on your own, and a specific plan that we can do together. The general strategy is, it doesn't matter what exactly you're doing. The more time you spend doing something with a language, the sooner you'll learn it. You need to master four skills. Reading, writing, listening, and speaking. They're all connected, so try to do some of each. Personally, I find reading is the easiest, because I can go at my own pace and study the words in front of me until they make sense. Maybe look them up in a dictionary. Speaking is the hardest, because you've got to put all of the words and the sounds and the grammar together in real time with somebody who can't guess what you're thinking and doesn't want to wait. It happens. You learn from your mistakes. But the secret is time, so make the time to read in English, or watch interesting videos with the English subtitles turned on, or write down the lyrics to your favorite songs while you listen. Whatever you do, just keep putting in the time. You're not going to talk the King's English tomorrow, but remember, it took King Charles many years as a child, and a lot of years in the fanciest schools in his kingdom, so that he could speak English like a king. Think about any baby you know, learning language at home. It takes them about five years before you can have a good conversation with them. So don't expect that you're going to master English much faster. Give yourself time and use that time to do anything in the language. Now that's the general strategy. Now here's the plan that I'm proposing we do together. There's a lot of stuff online for learning English, including a lot of websites, a lot of videos on YouTube. Watch those, they've usually got good information. The problem is a lot of those videos focus on presenting information rather than concentrating on how you are going to absorb and retain that information. I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to start an ongoing series that I'll call Minute English, which is kind of a pun because minute means 60 seconds and minute, which is spelled exactly the same way, means something very small. Every video in the Minute English series will be 60 seconds or less and focus on one point. Maybe it will be the difference between three words that sound the same, like there, there, and there. Or maybe I'll look at a few party terms, like she nailed it, she drove it out of the park, and she hit the jackpot, which all mean that she succeeded really well. Each video will be one little nugget. I'll take the time to mix in text and visuals so that the nuggets stick in your head. You'll learn that one little point today and another little point tomorrow, at another little point the next day, you're not going to learn English all at once. But that's the point. You learn one little thing where English is trying to make you feel stupid, and now you can laugh and, and move on. And if you forget, you can always come back and give the video another minute of your life sometime later on. Now, there are some things that will be impossible to treat in a minute. For videos when I need to go longer, I'll call them, it's not you, it's English. I'll try to keep those as brief as possible, but I'm going to worry more about quality than about time. The aim is, between Minute English and the somewhat longer videos, we'll chop up the big, confusing, illogical thing that is English into little bite-sized pieces. You can chew one piece at a time, and soon enough you'll be talking like King Charles. Well, not King Charles. He's British, I'm American, so if you learn from me, you'll be getting a fairly standard American version of English. Also, King Charles talks with a really posh accent that is going to make everybody hate you. If you're a British or an Australian kid and you're watching to master what you're not learning in school, 
the differences aren't too huge and I'll try to point out when we say or write something differently. One last thing, there's so many things I could cover in this series and a lot that I'm going to miss unless you ask about them. So if there's something you want to know about or think that other people should know about, please put your questions or suggestions in the comments down below and I will think about how to make that into a future video. Remember, you're not dumb. English is crazy. Little by little, one minute at a time, I think you can learn English pretty well. So let's do this together and let's get going.